Hey everybody, today we're doing areas between curves from the horizontal perspective. There are entire genres of problems where drawing vertical rectangles between graphs and then using the integral to add up the areas of all those rectangles just doesn't work very well. Here's a pretty typical example. Um, I want to find the area between the y-axis and the graph of this curve between y equals 0 and y equals 3. Um, when we look at the picture, we can immediately see why those vertical rectangles just aren't a great idea. For most of this shaded region, the top curve and bottom curve are actually the same thing, so it's not really clear how we would write integral of f of x minus g of x from x equals a to x equals b. Um, additionally, at the far left part of that shaded area, the top curve is y equals 3, so it, the top curve actually shifts halfway through the, the integral. Finally, notice that the curve is defined by a function of y, not a function of x. So trying to write integral of f of x minus g of x um, immediately would require us to do some, some algebra, and in particular solving that equation for y, and then figuring out what to do with the, with the solution. There's an easier way. Instead of looking at it from the vertical perspective, we're going to view this um, region from the horizontal perspective. We're going to draw horizontal rectangles and use the integral to add up the areas of all those little rectangles from y equals 0 to y equals 3. Um, basically I'm envisioning an infinitesimal rectangle, a rectangle of infinitesimal height at every y value in that range. The width of that rectangle then is going to be the x value of that function at any given y value. Here's the sort of formula we're looking at. To get the area between that graph and the y-axis we're going to integrate from y equals a to y equals b f of y dy, adding up the area of all those horizontal rectangles. Plugging in, in this particular case, y equals 0 to y equals 3, integral of that function of y dy. Okay, so now let's actually carry out this integral. In order to do that, we're going to use a u substitution, u equals y cubed plus 1. Um, that jumps out at me, first of all, because it's an inside function. It lies inside that parenthesis that's being squared. Second of all, I notice that its derivative is a factor in this integrand up to a constant multiple. So let's carry it out. We differentiate and solve for dy and then plug into the integral. So I took out the y cubed plus 1, replaced it with what it's equal to, u, and then took out the dy and replaced it with 1 over 3y squared du. Notice that I put y equals 0 and y equals 3 for the limits of integration. I don't want to confuse those for u values. When I eventually substitute in, I have to make sure I plug those in for y. Tiny bit of simplification, and now we're ready to integrate. So let's do it. We raise up the power by 1 and divide by the new power to get negative 4 thirds u to the negative 1. Before we plug in those limits of integration, we back we substitute back in the y cubed plus 1 for our u. Plug in, simplify a tiny bit, and we have our answer, 9 sevenths. Um, notice we got a positive answer at the end. That should always happen when you're doing an area. If you get a negative number, you did something wrong, like confusing the top curve and bottom curve, something like that. Okay, so we're supposed to be talking about areas between curves, not just under a curve. So let's do an example like that. Let's find the area enclosed by um, xy squared equals 1 and x minus the square root of y equals 1 between y equals 1 and y equals 3. Here's the picture. I really do recommend starting with a picture on all of these. It, it makes the, um, the integral much easier to set up if you have some geometric intuition. Okay, so we're viewing this from the horizontal perspective. We're going to draw a horizontal rectangle now. This is a really good candidate for horizontal rectangles for several different reasons. First of all, notice that instead of a top curve and a bottom curve, we really have a right curve and a left curve. Um, if we were to try and do it with top curve and bottom curve, we would have to look at different regions and see where the, the top curve and bottom curve change over that interval. Also notice that these equations are all very easy to solve as x as a function of y. So um, when we set up the integral, we're going to want to have functions of y in there if we're doing horizontal rectangles. Here we can actually accomplish that. Um, 
Also notice that we have these nice horizontal lines at y equals 1 and y equals 3. So those are going to be very natural limits of integration here. OK, so just as when we were doing vertical rectangles, areas between curves using vertical rectangles, we did the integral of top curve minus bottom curve. Here we do the integral of right curve minus left curve. And write that, if I write that a little bit more as a formula, I get the integral from a to b f of y minus g of y dy, where f of y is the curve that's further to the right. Notice, by the way, that everything here is written in terms of y. The limits of integration, the integrand, and the differential are all having to do with y. OK, so um, let's actually set this up. We're going to take these two equations, x minus root y equals 1 and xy squared equals 1, and, thinking of the, of the, and think of them as functions of y um, to get x equals 1 minus the square root of, I'm sorry, x equals 1 plus the square root of y and x equals 1 over y squared. Plug those in for the right curve and left curve. The right curve again is 1 plus the square root of y. The left curve is 1 over y squared to get an integral that we can actually work with. Now it's routine. We're going to write that in a slightly more manageable fashion. Anti-differentiate by raising up, e raising up each of those powers and multiplying by the reciprocal of the new power. Plug in the limits of integration and do a little bit of simplification. Overall, we get that the area between the two curves is approximately 4.13.